uh, this is June. Actually, today when I'm doing this video is the 11th of June of uh, 2024. So I know that those who are on the 10th of June, and there are also those who are ahead, depending where you are from. Here we do GMT, three plus three GMT, that's Nairobi or Kenya. Uh, so we, that is, uh, the time is around 8, 8, 8.17 p.m. So uh, this month is a, a men mental health uh, month. So because of the requests and also the interests of this month, we have had a request to do something on men's mental health <clears throat> because uh, of uh, the reasons we are going to see. So June is recognized as a men's mental health month. Uh, which is a uh, uh, very important and this month being uh, June. Actually, here in Africa, it is around uh, eleven. It is eleventh date of June, twenty twenty four. I know that those who are converting it from ten to eleven, that those who are ahead of us. So, depending where you are from, for me, I'm from plus three GMT. That's the time we use here in Nairobi or Africa. So I know that there are those who are plus six, uh, those who are minus six, depending where you are from. So that is uh, what we are, we are via it's 11th June of 2024. So today we're going to talk about something very special and according to the request and what the kind of uh, experience we've had, it's very important that we get to discuss because of the interest and also the requests we've had from various uh, quarters. So today we're going to talk about a very important aspect and which is uh, uh, we're going to talk about me the mental health perspective, especially uh, the men, men, men is mental health, uh, 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 mental health. June is dedicated uh, worldwide, especially by the World Health Organization, and it is called Men is Mental Health Month. June. So, and this is dedicated to raise awareness about the unique mental health challenges faced by men and promoting the strategies for prevention. So, uh, prevention and also for early interventions and also support. So, like, in, uh, like uh, any other calendar, we've had a lot of, uh, like ladies have a lot of calendar years calendar days we have those mother the mother's day the women's day the mother the lady we have a lot of uh, ladies we have a lot of dates for ladies being celebrated and as men we are not complaining but uh, this aspect of mental men's mental health month is a very crucial thing as we're going to see shortly so guys sit back and also, for because most of us have not subscribed to the channel, like from the numbers we have, and this is very obvious. So kindly, I want to give you two seconds to subscribe. Kindly subscribe, and the two seconds starts now. Thank you for subscribing, guys. Welcome, welcome. So uh, June is recognized as a mental health uh, month. Dedicated in raising the awareness about the unique mental health challenges faced by men and promoting the strategies for prevention, uh, early intervention, and support for the men. So during this month, various organizations, mental health advocates, and the communities come together to address the, uh, the, the, the stigma surrounding men's mental health and to encourage open conversation about emotional well-being. When we talk about men's mental health, it starts from how especially a man is brought up. Like men, we are told you are not supposed to to cry, especially in Africa. If uh, if you cry, if you are seen crying, uh, now you are not you are you are you are not a man enough. You are told to man up. So such kind of uh, upbringing also. It has been seen to contribute to a lot of mental uh, problems or illnesses associated with the manning up of the issues as we are going to see shortly. So, 
Uh, this month is for uh, men uh, to address the stigma uh, surrounding men's health, mental health and encourage open conversations about emotional well-being. So in some communities, men are taught not to express their feelings of pain, of loss, of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of any other experience. So it's very important that uh, we get to address such kind of issues in a very open way. So the key objectives of uh, Mental Health uh, Month, it includes uh, increasing the awareness, that's number one. That is educating the, the public about common mental health issues affecting men, such as depression, anxiety, and suicide. Especially suicide has been seen to really increase, uh, in the, in the, in, especially in the aspect of men. And highlighting the importance of early detection and intervention. So increasing awareness, that is the number one objective of the Mental Health Month of June. Number two is the promoting health-seeking behavior. So encouraging men to seek health and support for their mental health concerns and emphasizing that seeking assistance is a sign of rather strength than a weakness. So promoting help, seeking behavior from men, because uh, like I said, men are, are supposed to be strong and they're supposed to man up. But this month is to sensitize you men, you and I, that we, 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 have, we seek help or we, be, we develop a behavior of seeking help. Number three is about reducing the stigma. So uh, challenging societal norms, especially here in Africa, we have some uh, uh, norms and stereotypes which are uh, in the society. So that's such which uh, really encourage the mental, uh, mental problems for the men. So we want to discourage men from discussing, uh, we, we want to encourage men to discuss uh, their emotions or seek med mental health treatment and fostering the culture of acceptance and also support. So also we want to, uh, by one, number four is about providing resources through offering the information about the available mental health uh, services, support groups, helplines and online resources tailored to many specific needs and preferences. So we provide resources uh, by doing also this video in a Zwin channel. I'm also providing resources as information online so that we may get to share the information about the mental health services uh, which are available to empower you as a man or to empower your man as a lady. Also providing resources, that's, well, that's, a, that's a very important aspect. Number five is about empowering men. So by empowering men to take proactive steps, to prioritize uh, uh, their mental health, so it is a step which men should take or we should take about uh, uh, taking priority or their mental health and airplanes and also online resources tailored to many specific needs and also preferences. So, so that uh, with this, including the ad adopting a health lifestyles and also practicing stress management techniques and maintaining social connections, uh, uh, to, uh, which really get to empower the man. So throughout the men's mental health month, various events, campaigns, workshops, and online initiatives such as the one I'm doing now are organized to engage men, their families, their communities, and their healthcare providers in discussing about mental health and to promote positive attitudes and behaviors towards help and support. So by dedicating the month of June to mental health, advocate, uh, health advocates to them to shine as a spotlight on the important issue uh, of breakdown, breakdown barriers to care and ultimately improve the mental health outcomes and the quality of life for men across uh, the globe. So this, uh, that's why it's a global thing where we get to challenge men to, to get really uh, sensitized on this and also the ladies also to get sensitized because we coexist as male and female so that we get to uh, we get that help as much as possible and also we don't uh, neglect the intersex part of it also is that part also which uh, 
uh, also gets addressed at that particular point on the mental health aspects. So well, when I mention about male and female, I am not uh, I'm not being being uh, or being partial on the male and female, but I'm also taking care of whether those who are especially who are uh, the part of the intersex at the end of the at the end of the day. So when we talk about this mental health uh, month, it's very important that the men get to seek. Uh, they, they they get to have to get the help as much as possible. So I'm going to talk about men's mental health and also give overview the challenges and the strategies of uh, of for improvement. On the overview, men's mental health is a critical but often under discussed aspect of the overall well-being. Uh, so societal norms and expectations can sometimes make it challenging for men to seek help and also to express their mental health struggles. So however, uh, addressing men's mental health is essential for the quality of life, relationships and productivity. So uh, that is the overview of the mental health. So when we talk about the common mental health issues men deal with, so we have a lot of uh, challenges, common mental health in men. We have number one is about the, when we talk about depression. Men may exhibit symptoms of depression uh, differently than women, often appearing angry or irritable than sad. So this, uh, this is how men can express their depression. They may appear, uh, they may appear angry or irritable rather than being sad and as as compared to the ladies anxiety can be also one of the one of the common mental mental issue they can have where persistent worry or fear that interferes with daily activities also they may have substance abuse high rates of substance abuse uh, in men is a, is a, is as a, a coping mechanism for emotional pain so sometimes men uh, retreat to uh, these um, uh, abuse of drugs or uh, substance abuse as a coping mechanism for emotional pain. Stress is also one of the mental problems they may, may develop because chronic uh, stress from work, they can be also be from financial pressures and also family responsibilities. It they can feel can be in this uh, stress situation. Also, uh, suicide has been seen as a major problem with men. Men are at higher risk of suicide, often due to untreated mental uh, issues. Also, we have post-traumatic uh, uh, stress disorder or PTSD, which is common in men exposed to trauma, such as military veterans or victims of uh, violence. So what are the challenges which men face in addressing mental health? Number one is, I mean, I mentioned it, is stigma, because uh, societal expectation that men uh, should be stoic and self-reliant uh, can prevent them from seeking help. So stigma is one of the things. Number two is about under-reporting. Men are less likely to report uh, mental health issues or seek professional help. Like any other behavior which really works against men. So these uh, health-seeking behavior and also under-reporting can be an issue of seeking, uh, the, the men don't like, uh, like not to report mental health issues or seek the professional help as compared to the ladies. Number three is lack of awareness, limited understanding of mental illness or mental issues uh, can, uh, can really impact on the physical health of these men. Also access to care, uh, because barriers like uh, lack of insurance or financial constraints, constraints and the limited availability of mental health services can also be a challenge in addressing the health of a man. So what are the strategies for improvement? So number one is about education and awareness. So promote awareness about the importance of mental health and its impact and overall well-being. So this is where we get to educate men about com, uh, common mental health issues and encourage open discussion. Number two is about encourage help-seeking behavior. We are normalized seeking help for mental health issues through public campaigns and community programs. 
and also uh, highlight stories of men who, who have su successfully managed their mental health challenges. This can be in the support groups or in the one-on-one exper uh, -on -one experience with those people who have had these challenges. Number three is support networks. Foster strong support networks among family, uh, friends, and also peers. So the family should understand how these men are operating and when they are likely to go into these mental problems so that they can support them because the family plays a very important role in supporting these mental problems. So, and also society, very important, friends and also peers. Also encouragement to share their feelings and seek uh, support within their social circles. So support networks are very important. This, this uh, uh, support, uh, these social circles can include also workplaces where the employers can put mechanisms in place to take care of the mental health challenges for men. Also professional help, provide information on accessing mental health services, including therapy and counseling. So that's very important and also advocate for regular mental health checkups as part of routine healthcare. Number five is about health lifestyle. So that where we promote physical activity for men, which can improve mental health by reducing stress and also anxiety. So also encourage balanced diet, adequate sleep, and avoidance of substance abuse for men. So workplace initiatives is also very important. While we implement workplace mental health programs and provide resources, for employees to seek help. So like I mentioned, the employer, employers can provide these mechanisms in their workplace where we get to help this uh, group of people or a group of men where they can have the resources to help them. So first also support work environment that, uh, in, uh, that promotes work-life balance and stress reduction. Number eight is about policy and advocacy. We are advocate for policies that increase access to mental health service and support mental health. This policy on, ad on policy and advocacy this is the work of the government and also the parliaments which run the countries, where we should have uh, policies and, uh, through, and laws which really support mental health education and also services which are available for the, this key population. Also, Support research on men's mental health to better, the underst uh, to better understand and address unique challenges. So we've seen there's a lot of limited research which has been done on mental health for men so that we get to address some issues and understand why men can exhibit some uh, characteristics which are not very common with also the ladies. So the uniqueness should be addressed at this particular point. So by addressing the mental health is a, is a vital for the overall well-being and health of the society. So by increasing awareness, reducing the stigma, and providing resources and support, we can create an environment where men feel empowered to seek help and manage their mental health effectively by encouraging open dialogue, promoting health lifestyle, and ensuring access to professional care and also which are essential steps towards improving men's mental health and outcomes. So uh, how do we manage this mental health uh, thing in men? So effective management of mental, uh, men's mental health involves comprehensive approach, like I've mentioned, that addresses various aspects of well-being, including physical health. We should ensure the men are physically health, emotional health, and also social support. And the key strategies on managing this, yeah, I've talked about awareness and education, where mental health literacy is very important for men, where men are educated about the symptoms of common mental illnesses, such as depression, anxiety, and stress, and also normalize the conversation. Men should really listen to these conversations about mental health and accept it is, uh, it is there. Even the society should be there, should normalize conversation and encourage open discussions about mental health to reduce stigma and make it easier for men to seek help. And but it's about encouraging healthy seeking behavior. So the stigma is therapy. Uh, so with this way we'll promote the benefits of therapy and counseling for mental health management. And also number two is about accessibility, accessible resources, where we provide information about available mental health resources and also including hotlines, support groups, and the mental professionals 
on in, on hotlines we want those uh, when your man faces that challenge they can easily talk with the professionals on the on the phone on the on call and also get that help on the support systems we talk about peer support and encouragement to connect with friends family and peers who can offer emotional support and support groups we participate in uh, or create support groups where men can share their experiences and the strategies in coping with the mental health challenges Number four is about health lifestyle choices, where regular exercise comes number one, engaging in regular physical activities to reduce stress, anxiety, and depression in men. So exercise is a way of managing this. Balance diet, eat nutritious diet to support overall mental and physical uh, health. And adequate sleep is very important, where we ensure sufficient and quality sleep, as, as poor sleep can exacerbate mental health issues. So limit substance use, avoid excessive alcohol consumption and substance abuse, which can negatively impact the mental health. Number five is about stress management techniques, which need to be taught to the men. And when we talk about stress management techniques, we're talking about mindfulness and, and meditation. By practicing my, uh, uh, mindfulness, meditation, and also deep breathing exercises, it reduces the stress and also enhances emotional regulations. Also, on the stress management, uh, we talk a very important component where, as men, we most of the time miss about time management. When we talk, we develop effective time management spil- uh, skills, we get to balance work, family, leisure activities, and also when you balance work, family, and leisure activities, you get to reduce stress levels. So as men, we need to really manage our time well so that we allocate each <clears throat> each thing according to the need at that particular at that particular point professional help <clears throat> is also very important where therapy and the counseling seek therapy or counseling from a licensed professional <clears throat> to address the specific mental health <clears throat> sorry guys to address the mental health concerns very important. Also medication, if necessary, if uh, your doctor or your healthcare provider provides medication as an option, kindly manage the condition as such as depression or anxiety, so as men should accept it to each. Very important as employers, workplace mental health, supportive environment for employers, foster supportive work, work, workplace culture and prioritize mental health and well-being. Also, we have what we call employee assistance programs, EAPs. Utilize the EAPs that offer counseling and mental health resources for employees. That's very important for the employer to provide those workplace mental health. Employee assistance programs, EAPs, is very important at that particular point. Number eight is about building resilience, where coping skills is very important, where you develop and practice uh, coping skills to handle life's challenges and also setbacks. setbacks. Also, positive relationships where uh, cultivate positive relationships that provide emotional support and enhance the resilience at that particular point. Very important, guys. Regular healthy checkups where, uh, like I said, men we fail, uh, we have very poor health seeking behavior. So, routine screening is very important. That is, includes uh, mental health screening as a part of regular health checkups. Sometimes we check other things and ignore the obvious one. And mental health is also supposed to be screened regularly as you do other screening. Also, integrated care. So seek integrated care where mental health services are co- coordinated with your primary health care. So as a component also, when you go for that checkup, also let, uh, let us have uh, the general uh, check up from your healthcare provider, but also have that integrated mental health uh, coordinated services so that you get to benefit from the, those services. Number 10 is about community engagement. When you talk about community programs, participate in community programs and activities that promote mental health awareness and support. So it's very important because as you participate, also you get to learn the experience and also get to support those who have those challenges. Volunteer work is also very important. In engaging in a volunteer work or community service, it can improve the mental health by providing a sense of purpose and also connection.
Managing men's mental health, guys, requires an holistic approach that includes the education, support systems, health lifestyle choices, professional health, and the community engagement. By creating an environment that encourages open dialogue, dialogue, uh, reducing stigma and providing and provide that and provide access to resources, men can better manage their mental health and lead uh, fulfilling lives. Regular checkups, health checkups, and stress management techniques are also very crucial for maintaining mental health well-being. Through these strategies, we can support men in achieving and maintaining optimal mental health. Unfortunately, sometimes we get complications related to mental health and uh, I have classified them into around uh, nine categories. So I'm going to start with the number one. Uh, when you get the mental health problems is untreated or poorly managed, the mental mental issue, health issues in men can significantly uh, affect their quality of life or they affect their quality of life, they affect their relationships and overall health. And the, some of the potential complications which can come up with these uh, mental health problems if they remain unattended. Number one is physical health problems. Number two is about substance abuse. Number three is about suicide. Relationship issues as number four. Number five is workplace challenges. Number six is about impaired uh, daily functioning. Number seven is legal issues. Number eight is uh, developing of chronic conditions. Number nine is the impact on children and also family at the end of the day. So I'm going to start with number one, physical health problems. When you talk about physical health problems, uh, with these unattended uh, mental health problems, we have number one, cardiovascular disease as a physical health problem, where chronic stress, depression, and anxiety can contribute to heart disease and also hypertension. Number two is about obesity and diabetes. Mental health issues can lead to poor dietary choices and the lack of exercise, increasing the risk of obesity and diabetes. And also number three on these physical health problems, we have weakened immune system. Because chronic stress can suppress the immune system, making men more susceptible to illness and also infection. Number two uh, complication is substance abuse, where like number one, we have alcohol and drugs. Men with untreated mental illnesses issues may turn to alcohol or drugs as a coping mechanism. And this leads to addiction and substance abuse disorders. And number two is about prescription medication misuse. There's risk of misusing uh, prescription medication, especially painkillers and sedati sedatives, which can result in what you call dependency or addiction. <clears throat> So this substance abuse can be due to alcohol and the drug abuse and also over dependency of <coughs> sorry guys of prescribed medication number three is about uh, suicide actually suicide has become a very big problem nowadays especially with the experience of men and to the surge of uh, mental health uh, issues so on suicide as a complication, we have an increased risk. Men are at high risk of suicide due to factors like reluctance to seek help, use of more lethal methods, and uh, untreated depression and anxiety. So when one is not attended well at that particular point, they are likely to go into suicide. And this has been seen to be more on men than ladies. Also on warning signs, Warning signs including talking about wanting to die, feeling hopelessness, especially one who wants to commit suicide, withdrawing from others, and ex displaying extreme mood swings. Number four is about relationship issues. We have strain on relationships as a complication where now uh, mental health problems can strain relationships with the family, friends, partners, leading to conflict, separation, <coughs> or divorce. Also, we may have what we call social isolation, where men with mental health issues may withdraw from social activities and relationships, leading to isolation and also loneliness. Number five is workplace challenges, where we have decreased uh, productivity. Mental illness issues can reduce concentration, motivation, and productivity at work. So 
this one can also be a good aspect where the employers can look at, especially with decreased productivity, to look at the mental health status of their employees. So absenteeism also is one of the challenges which comes in the workplace uh, as a workplace challenge, challenge uh, complication where increased absenteeism due to mental health related issues can impact job performance and also career progression. And finally, it can lead also to job loss with severe mental health issues may lead to job loss or inability to maintain unemployment. Number six complication is about impairment, impaired daily functioning where we have cognitive decline, where depression and anxiety can impair cognitive functions such as memory, decision-making, and problem-solving. So daily activities, uh, we may have difficulty in managing daily activities and maintaining personal hygiene and fulfilling the responsibility. Number seven is about legal issues, because now one can exhibit a, a legal issues as a complication where now criminal behavior can pop up. Because of untreated mental health issues, particularly substance abuse disorders can lead to criminal behavior and legal problems. Also, financial problems can come up on the legal part of it. Poor mental health can result in financial mismanagement, leading to debt and also financial instability at the end of the day. So developing, and also number eight, is about development of chronic conditions. With uh, an attended mental health uh, and mental health. So you have untreated mental health issues, you can develop chronic mental health disorders such as depression, what we call severe de uh, de depression, generalized anxiety disorder or bipolar disorder can become there where now we have a bigger problem. So co-occurring dis uh, di disorders, many may develop co-occurring disorders where mental health issues coexist with other medical conditions or uh, sub, uh, substance abuse uh, disorders at the end of the day. Number nine is the impact on the children and the family. And this is the aspect which is really ignored. It's very important as a complication of the impact on children and the family. So number one is about it changes the family dynamics where now father's mental health can significantly impact the emotional and psychological well-being of children and other family members. Number two on this impact on the children, on the children and the family Inter, intergenerational effects. Children of men with untreated mental issues are at high risk of developing mental health problems themselves. Children of men with untreated mental health issues are at higher risk of developing mental health problems themselves. So we have an intergenerational effects at the end of the day. So the complications arising from untreated or poorly managed mental health issues in men can be severe can be severe and also far-reaching, far far affecting the physical health and also relationships, work performance and overall quality of life. So early interventions and also appropriate treatment and also ongoing support are very crucial in mitigating these complications. By promoting awareness, uh, reducing stigma and encouraging help, seeking behavior as a, as a essential uh, steps towards managing men's mental health, and also preventing these uh, complications. So how do we prevent these mental health uh, problems? M preventing mental health uh, uh, issues in men involves a multi-phased approach and addressing lifestyle choices such as uh, uh, social support, education, and other interventions uh, so that we get uh, the, to help these uh, uh, to, to prevent these mental health issues. Number one, uh, prevention way is about promote awareness and education. I mentioned it in, in our introduction. So mental health, mental health literacy is very important where we increase awareness about mental health issues and the importance of mental well-being through the education programs and public campaigns. Number two, on this promoting awareness, we recognize symptoms, teach men to recognize the early symptoms of mental health uh, problems, such as changes in mood, behavior, and also physical health. Number two is about encourage health, uh, help seeking behavior, is also a way of preventing it, where we normalize mental health care, 
This one reduces the stigma around mental health by normalizing discussions about the mental health and seeking.